welcome to the Live Your Possible podcast, the show about sparking and discovering endless possibilities where we work, live, and play. A safe place where we can help you peel back the cover to what may be blocking you from being your most authentic and happiest self. Hi, welcome back. Shamaya Lodge to the Live Your Possible podcast. We're going to talk about our story today, about our allyship journey, and how we put each other on an equal playing field where we help each other thrive without even asking. We challenge and encourage each other. We're courageous and vulnerable. It's an amazing journey on what could happen if you take genuine interest and care to a whole new level. Take a listen and enjoy the show. Shamaya, what's happening? Welcome back to the Live Your Possible podcast. Thanks for having me, Darren. How are you doing today? I'm doing amazing, especially here talking with you. Oh, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> hey, last time we met, we were talking about fair chance hiring. And uh, that's, uh, that's something that's really special this month. You want to just give a quick little shout out about that in April? Yeah, so April is Second Chance Month. It's the month that we pause and reflect on the importance of giving opportunities to individuals who are impacted impacted by the criminal legal system. Fair chance hiring is just one of those components that we should continue to think about when we um, support individuals who are reacclimating into society. Um, but there's many different avenues and support that we can assist them with, like housing, like making sure that, you know, they have food and, and, and things like that. And so we believe in second chances. Um, and so with that, we have to make sure individuals have what they need to thrive. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I love the work that you've been doing throughout your whole life. And I got to tell you, you've always been influencing me because guess what? I had this opportunity where I'm helping a company hire someone and I was filling out the form online to see how we would hire this person. And guess what? There's a box that says, fair chance hiring, yes or no. Isn't that crazy? And I said, of course, Shamaya, check. So you're always inspiring me. So like, let's go back to like the beginning of when we, we met, right? We were both working at Mass Mutual, great company, you know, took care of us. We took care of them in many ways too. And I remember some of the early times we, we connected, you always piqued my interest. You always lit me up based on what you shared and how you shared it. You've always been up front with ideas and suggestions, right? Giving me real-time feedback over these years. But even back then, do you remember that when we were first working together? I do. I was a, I was a young, hungry employee, uh, making sure, trying to make sure that my work was very impactful. And so I, you know, I made it my point every time I got in a, in a space of a leader, Darren, you let, let's be clear here. You were doing amazing things at Mass Mutual and leading some, some huge initiatives. And so I wanted to make sure you knew who I was. And so, um, I, it's always a goal of mine to delight people whenever I'm in their presence. And so thank you for, uh, being so easy to delight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember we were talking, you were, were just like this back before the pandemic, right? You were, you were talking through uh, the TV, talking about the work we had going on. You're in Phoenix, I'm in, in uh, Connecticut. I remember giving you feedback after that conversation. And in the beginning, you were very scripted about Lean Six Sigma and all the things we got to do. And you're like, you're phenomenal. When you stop talking about the script, and you actually talked from your heart about what's really happening, you shocked. Do you remember that? I do remember that. And I said, wow, you know, it, it's so crazy because it's, I often reflect on that piece of feedback, right? Like, so you, I, and I don't know if this is true for you, but I remember throughout my life when I, when I've received feedback, that literally changed how I showed up for myself. Sometimes we get feedback, you're like, yeah what, what, I don't, why are you telling me this? Like, I, I don't know, like, kind of like, it's hard, but it's even hard to apply what was shared with you. But the feedback you shared, I'm like, wow, like this man, it came from a place of like, wow, you're, you're watching me. You really care about me. Like the feedback you provided, it was basically feedback that was for all intents and purposes was telling me to get out of my way. If I really want to shine, if I will really want to be great, like I have to get out of my way because there's no amount of scripts. There's no amount of reading that can really do what I'm able to do when I am my authentic self. And I thought that that was so, it was such a precious gift for you to share with me. And, um, I mean, I've went on from that moment to speak with 
you know, so much confidence. I've, I have more, more sponsors as a part of my, my own personal board of directors and they shared similar feedback, but, but not to the place where like, I, I felt where I'm like, wow, like this was deep, this was deep, Darren. And so I, I'm, I'm reminded by that piece of feedback, um, even to this day, as I, as I speak and I'm out and, and doing the great work that I do. So. Yeah, and I and I see that in you when you're out speaking and doing your road tour, which I'm I'm sure it's only going to pick up over time. You know, why do I bring this question up? Why do I? Why am I bringing this up? Because I remember giving you feedback that had some words that you're kind of like, huh? And you gave me feedback. You know, I'm, I was a white male leader at the time, and you gave me feedback about, hey, you might want to be careful about some of those words that you, you know, how I gave you the feedback, and why I said that is like it was so important because it actually put me back in my chair to say, wait a minute, and I need to be more thoughtful, more mindful about how we're communicating together. My intentions were exactly the way you said it. Yeah, maybe the words I use could have tripped you up. And I think that's what goes on in today's society. Like the words we're using, we get tripped up based on maybe what we're saying, but my intention was right. Yet I wasn't really clearly communicating what, what I probably should have. Yeah. And like, think about that. Right. And so like, it could have just stopped there. You could have said, who does this person think she is to share this level of feedback with me? I could have never shared the feedback and you could have provided similar things or approaches to like, it could have been crazy. But the fact that we are two people who have always, regardless of our walks of lives, seek to understand and uh, assume positive attempts, we were able to have that moment me being me having the courage to provide you the level of feedback that I did and you having the courage to accept it and we can still do great work. And now, you know, our, our relationship has morphed to, to us just being each other's advisors and, and more importantly, each other's friends. And so, I mean, like I even take that with me, like it's so hard to tell somebody to be like, wait a minute, like, did you, did you really mean to say this? Like, are you wait, like, tell me what you meant by those words and let's, let's unpack, um, a few other words that could have best been better if, you know, depending upon it's, it's hard out here because there's so much happening in the world around us when it's just like, no, I didn't mean to say that. Like we just, we're always walking on eggshells and glass. It's crazy. Well, yeah. You know what happens is then we don't talk, we don't talk to each other. We don't, we don't share what's going on. And, and I was just talking with a leader yesterday. She said to me, I don't, I'm afraid to say it because I'm afraid I'm going to, not say the right thing and I'm going to, I'm going to trip up. And I, I think that's the, that's the most amazing thing is that we need to be able to give ourselves grace to have these conversations, you know, for showing up with heart and care for each other, we should be able to help each other through it and not to say, I got you or you're limited or this or that, because there's too many people that are, you know, today, or it's, it's, everything's divisive, you know, we're, we got trigger words everywhere. It's so horrible. And, you know, we can't operate like we want to operate, but we find times and we figure out how to do it. I, I just, oh, sometimes I get so caught off guard with what's happening in society today. And I'm like, does it really have to be that hard though? Like, can we really just have a conversation? Um, And it sucks because I know that there is so much trauma that people still carry with them to this day. That's not lost on me, right? Like, it's not lost on me that it's much more harder for, for folks and their situations is much more difficult, right? Like I'm thankful that Mass Mutual created a space where we can have the levels of conversations that we had, like the, for, they, they provided us with tools, right? Like they really did, um, as, as weird as that may seem, but it's those tools that we carry in, in life today and, and we use them with us. And so a lot of companies, right? And this, I mean, that's me just not paying me to do this, this commercial, but a lot of companies, you know, and a lot of people who are working for corporations are not, they're, they're not as fortunate to be able to um, lead from a place of courage and have authentic conversations and walk away knowing that um, we're better as a result of the conversations we are able to have. Yeah, you're right. I mean, one of the tools that I would say it's one of the greatest gifts I've gotten from Mass Mutual was, was to authentically step through and, and look at life differently and, and meet people with, with pure love and light, like with you and with other people I might have pushed away in the past. And we had this uh, immersion event that I went to. It was a diversity and inclusion event that I had gone to eight years ago in May, eight years ago. And it changed the rest of my life. And I remember later that year, I went to see you. I was going, I was actually 
on a trip with my family out to Sedona and some other amazing places. And my mind was spinning because I, you know, many people have heard my story about I've had I had that awakening where like I wasn't treating people the way I thought I could as an individual, as a human being. Like what we're talking about. How do we how do we talk about like allyship and humanship in real ways? Like how do we treat each other with genuine care and interest without letting some things get in the way that we were told or things that we might have thought was true in the past? Which to me, that's that's where I had this awakening to say, no, I need to look at differences as beauty, as strengths as opportunities for us to discover what's right in front of us all the time. Like, that's why I'm always lit up when we're chatting. You know, what I, and I remember seeing you in Phoenix and you were not in a great place. And we had some real uh, down and dirty conversations. And I don't know if you recall where that went and where, like, I guess I'd love to know, what were you thinking at that time? What were you thinking about like, oh, I, I came in and we're having this conversation. Like, who the heck's this guy kind of thing? But like, wh where were you at? Yeah, I mean, you know, wow, Darren. So we're going we're going there, huh? We're going down memory lane. Um, when we worked together at Mass Mutual, um, and when you ended up coming out here to visit me, it was at a really interesting time in in my um career where I was, you know, selected to to lead an amazing project, but I was the one, I was the only one leading it in Arizona. And so, you know, distance bias is real. It was real back then. Um, it's still real to this day. Um, one of the things I say, and, and I'm very, I'm very cautious when I say it, but for me, it means something different is, is that, you know, COVID was a hard time for all of us, but in the business world, especially when you, you're not working in headquarters, um, or not working with your team every day, you know, COVID was the great equalizer it leveled the playing field. And for folks like myself, when I, when I came out to Arizona to help stand up the satellite office for the company, it was very, very real how hard it is to navigate and just have a voice if you're not in the room with other folks, right? And so that is what I was experiencing at the time when you came to visit me. Not only was I responsible for meeting my goals and my deliverables on this big project we were working on together, but I always I was also experiencing what it was like to be only one of own, like the only one. And I say that again very cautiously because you know we hear that all the time, you know, from women or uh, black women or even sometimes millennials, depending upon what room we're in. You know, we're still, we are really the only one. But in this particular situation, I was the only, it was clear. I was the only one in Arizona and there was a lot of people in Connecticut and Massachusetts. And so um, I was working through that. And so um, I was, I was in a hard place when we met, easily triggered by any little things. What do you mean you're scheduling a meeting at 6 a.m.? Well, it may be 9 a.m. your time, but it's 6 a.m. my time. Let's think about that. Right. And so, um, yeah, I do remember the time <laughs> that you came and visit me and we had some really just hard life conversations, not only conversations about the work and how you could assist with making sure, you know, I have what I need. What I value the most about those conversations when you came out here is, is, is that you let me talk. <laughs> you let me talk. You let me talk. And and that allowed you to listen and it allowed you to listen differently. Um, and so talk, talk to me about what you got out of those conversations when we had them. Shamai, it's a, it's a great question. I, you know, I felt a little nervous, uncomfortable when we got together, you know, not only, uh, were you at the time an amazing, uh, employee and colleague, you know, you were someone that I wanted to listen to because as I was going through this journey, I, I needed to step in and get uncomfortable and to have these conversations and for you to let me listen was powerful in itself. And I, I got to that point, as I mentioned eight years ago, like I wanted to listen differently. That's the big thing here for anybody that cares about allyship or cares about people they work with or wants to make an impact about how they show up and, and how they actually want to have an impact on people's lives. And that's what I started to realize. Like I wasn't having a direct impact on people's lives and I, I wanted to get to know you better as a human being, as a person, like what's going on? Why are you upset? And to your point about, you know, the voice, you know, I could recognize that, you know, where I sat, you know, my voice was heard all over the place, partially because of who I am and 
what I look like, partially because of where I sat in the company. Uh, part of it is taking out your idea, other people's ideas and being the voice when it didn't need to be me at that time. I didn't know better until we were talking. I started to hear you give me a lot of feedback and a lot of great ideas. I mean, you've taught me so many things about, about voices, which we'll talk more about in a second, about how we think about words like using words like articulation and being mindful of that, what it means to be a white savior or not, and what the what that could look like. What does it mean to have black joy? You know, what does it mean to, to feel like someone in today's society eight years ago without much of it even changed? Today, like, I have such a great level of respect and love for you. And, and I've learned so much from you. And it's like, I, I, like I, all I see is this, this shining soul. Every time I connect with you, I felt that way when we were connecting, I kept having to push away my discomfort and be intentional about it. And it was painful at the time because it's like, I was, I was pushing, you know, you and others away, but you'll help me see through that and expand and get uncomfortable to really live out my purpose, which is for you to, to have a voice at the table. And, and for you to actually do the things you were meant to do here. Wow. Listen, Darren, that 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 just hit me different because um, when I when I think about the landscape right now and just like the polarization of of DEI and, you know, how many people are just saying, you know, why is it a thing like it was just an initiative we're past that we're on to the next, you know, and I just heard you re re literally sum up, you know, our conversation from your point of view, your perspective, and, and, and you heard me talk about it from my perspective. At the end of the day, I just wanted to make sure there was a level of inclusion for me and my voice on the team, right? Um, I didn't, I did it never, I never wanted it to be, you have to make sure like, you know, two white people spoke and then I need to speak because I'm black or make sure I go for like, it wasn't that. I knew that the team that you and others have created um, based off of our differences, variety of different things, if we figured out how to make it work, it was going to be the best harmony. And it ended up do being just that. So we, what I was trying to make sure that I did in that space was like differences aside, like the diverse aspect is the outcome of doing the other things well. It's the outcome of making sure we're including people and their voices and taking into consideration the time zone or um, or their knowledge gap, right? And so that's where that, that equity comes in at, right? Like meeting people where they are, right? So those are the things without using those words that I was advocating for as an individual, and then hopefully it will show up in other folks, not because they were a different race, right? Or a different gender. It was because it just made the best sense, right? And so like, it's it's interesting because people talk to me all the time, like, oh, how long have you been doing this DEI work? Like since I was on the playground <laughs> and I never looked at it as such. Um, that's not my story. I've always felt like I was a part of a team right? Whether the, the coach decided to see that or not, right? In this case, I look at you as the coach. I eventually knew my role was to get my coach to make sure that I was in the game, right? Because I was prepared to play the game. I had all of the tools and resources that I needed. There was nothing lacking. It was just a differences of, well, this is interesting. We've never thought about it this way. So maybe we should. This could she be our wild card perhaps, right? And I'm just like, I, I'm just like everyone else. Like I've studied the game. I studied the skill set. I studied the methodology. I know this, like, let's play the game. Yeah, and I remember acting as quote unquote, a mentor, a sponsor is what corporate America calls these things. And as we're talking and, and I'm hearing you, you know, refer back as well. And, and I often think about it today, that I was as much as a mentee as anybody in, in a relationship. Like I learned so much from you, as, as I pointed out moments ago, you know, part of, you know, part of what I hope people listen to around this is what we bring into these relationships, what's our intention, what we hope to get out of it. And if we're really reaching across the room, the table, the country to really try to help each other, get the best out of whatever you need, taking care of each other with real intention, with real care, it's amazing how 
we all can really thrive and blossom. And that's what I recognize out of our relationship quite a bit. I mean, as a mentor, I remember you saying, well, he was really good about running this down back at corporate and, and helping to open doors and to get, to get you to be heard. And that's, to me, that's the, that's the job of a sponsor or, or a, you know, whatever a mentor or a person of interest that wants to care for someone is you, you make it happen without someone really asking you. Right. That's something that I think you said to me meant a lot to you. And I, and I, you know, I'll, that'll never, I'll never lose that. Cause I'll carry that on with me. One of the things that I recall too, is if chapter five of my book, people should read that chapter because you're a star in that chapter in particular, one of my favorite things that I've learned, which I'll never stop, which is really about this journey to about ongoing inclusivity and any perspective. And, you know, I gave you a couple of versions of the, of the chapter and I asked for your feedback and I, I'm sure you remember some aspects of it. The thing that stood out to me is that I was still highlighting in the chapter before we fixed it where I, I was saying that my voice made a difference for you. And it was almost like, or not almost, see, I'm even catching it. I, I was giving too much credit to my voice. It wasn't about my voice. And what you said back to me was, Darren, what did you say? Do you want to finish that? I said, Darren, this is giving white savior. <laughs> Stop. Exactly. And then you also said, I don't need your voice. I have a voice. Correct. And that was huge. And I had to take, I had to take my privilege that I had at that point in time and you helped me identify what that looked like, right? My voice was heard differently just because of where I come from and what I look like. And a lot of people don't like to talk about that word. I had privilege and I, I needed to do it more honorably. And this visual that I used today is because of you around this megaphone. Like I had this megaphone it was invisible. I didn't even know I had it. And I needed to just really get out of the way and give you the megaphone so your voice could be heard loud and clearly that you're so amazing. And look what happened. Not because of what I did. It's just, it was your voice that, like you said, made it happen. I think it's oftentimes a, a thing, right? again, going back to what's happening right now in this nation, right? I have to do the work in order for you to feel comfortable and, you know, and being that, that advocate, that voice or opening up the door, right? Like, I'm just like, just crack it open. I'll push my way through, right? It only takes that much. But I had to have done the work. I have to do the work. It's not, a, it's not, and the same thing, you know, I, I use when, when we're talking about the community that, that I support right now, that's near and dear to my heart, which is, which is the justice impacted community. I always say it's, it's not about, it's not about a, a hand, a hand out. It's really a hand up. Like they've done the work. They're ready. They're ready for people to give them a chance. I've, I've done the work. I just need just, just say, you know what? I'm bringing Shamaya with me today. And we've been doing this work together as a group. And I'm going to have Shamaya present out on the work we've been we've been doing it. And I'm here if, if anyone has any questions. But Shamaya is going to be able to, to lead, lead the conversation today. Because guess what? Shamaya is up every single night when, when she's putting her, her babies to bed. And, and she's studying the, the craft so she could make sure she's prepared and ready for those moments. Because they don't, have, they don't happen often. Still to this day, um, it's gotten much better as a nation and as society. And I need to be clear here. My, that's not my story. I, my story is very different in corporate America. Very, very different. Um, I and many people have heard me say this before. You know, I, I have benefited from my work going into rooms before people even know that it was my work. Right. Like I, I just that's just 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 the nature of, of the beast. And because of that, I've gotten opportunities. And it's not because you know, any, many, many, mo. Oh, there's not any black people in the room. Let's bring this one. It's no, I'm a part of the any, many, many moles. Right. And so, um, those things are not lost on me, but I wanted to also share with you when we were having our conversation back and forth about the chapter in the book, like Darren, listen, you were only able to really feel confident enough to do this because you knew deep down, I was prepared for this moment. Like you knew that I can do this. And so, with that, it's less about your voice and it's more about you making sure I get opportunity. Yeah, well said. It's perfect. Like, I guess, how could you encourage folks to be prepared to do the work? What are some things that come to mind for you from, from your perspective? I mean, it's just business as usual. I, I don't think, you know, if people want to do a good job, they will do a good job, right? Um, that's what you're hired into a company to do, right? 
I think for me and just personally, I've never looked at the work I did as just a job, a nine to five. I've always built my career from very early on entering into, you know, the corporate arena. And so with that mindset, I've been able to continuously do um, what I think, what I hope my kids will one day think is, is great work, right? Um, humbly speaking. And so I just encourage people to find what, what gets them going and go really hard at that. And if you're not happy in what you're doing, then you have to figure out what makes you happy and whatever makes you happy, you're going to excel at it. And then how, how would you suggest aligning to, to mentors or people that can help really enhance allyships and enhance what, you know, what you're, what makes you happier, what, what impact you want to leave in this world or what, you know, what future we want to create. And how, how would you suggest that happens? Because let's be honest, you were the mentor. <laughs> no, it goes back to your interests, right? I'll never forget, right? Um, because of where I sat in the organization, it was really hard to come in contact with, you know, leaders, right? It's just really hard. I was like so many levels down. But what I always tried to make sure I did was listen when we were doing like all hands on meeting, all employee meetings, or when there was special, you know, events that we will host and a leader will come and speak at. And it was if there was anything that, you know, I was super curious about or wanted that leader to kind of elaborate on, I would email the leader and say, listen, I just heard you speak and you talked about this. And this is something that I've always was interested in. Do you have 15 minutes to chat? And no, I can't meet you in the cafeteria. We're going to have to figure out what Zoom is. Because remember, you know, distance things were real back then. But um, I've never been told no. Individuals reach out. And from that first initial conversation, you'll decide at that point if you want to continue to talk or if it was just the one and done. And we sometimes we have to be okay with the one and done. Everyone is not for everyone. And I'm and I mean that respectfully, but you have to find your tribe. You have to find your unit. And I'm fortunate enough to to have had you and still have you as a part of my tribe. I'll never forget, I had the opportunity to speak at one of the events um, Mass Mutual was hosting and it was on allyship and sponsorship. And, you know, they gave us the opportunity. They said, you know, if you could tell your sponsor or your mentor one thing, like, what would you say, you know, you know, if they were in the room today or listening. And, and at that, that point, I, uh, I exposed our secret there and I said, listen, Darren, is that is that to me what we talked about today? You know, a lot of my examples is examples that I, I shared with Darren and that we worked through. And so I was really fortunate to have you have attended that. And you probably didn't even expect to even hear that. But I thought it was such a fitting moment um, to share a little bit about, you know, our relationship and our mentorship and just our, our honest conversations without going too deep and, you know, um, you know, sharing some of the, the secrets we shared because some of these conversations are personal, right? Um, because we've built trust along the way. And so I was just really fortunate to be able to to, to highlight you in that space. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I remember being on that call. I was actually quite emotional, surprised. I was on the call as a woman's leadership call. So I was out there to expand my discomfort and also advocating and supporting uh, as part of, my, part of my journey. And then for you to share this story, which, you know, to me, it's about, you and then you shared about us that was so was so incredible and i you know, i just it stuck with me right it's like you want to do more because you're sharing how important that was to you and i just want to do more i really always reflect on our relationships right you know, i'm in a different space right now at a different company and you know i've i'm much levels higher than what i was and so i have a different level of access to the leaders and um you know when i meet with them and i speak with them you know I'm like, wow, you know, this person is getting his daring on, right? And I'm like, and I think to myself, no, 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 this is this is the way the country is moving towards. This is just natural. These are just people showing up. This is them just being their authentic self. You know, as much as we want to just start to persona people, like I'm like, okay, so he's a daring. Like he, I'm like, no, this is like who this person is in real life. And so even I am oftentimes checking myself. And making sure that, you know, I am, I'm respecting people for just them being genuine, nothing more, nothing less. Um, so I even have a, ooh, be careful, Shemaya, check yourself on that moment. Because again, we're so polarized by everything that's happening. It's hard for us to 
realize and recognize when relationships are just real and what the, and, and take them at face value. And so um, just want to make sure that I also tell that to your listeners, you know, uh, be careful not to judge and be overcritical. Um, people are really just people and want to do the right thing. It's not prescriptive. Um, this is not an initiative. Um, people are just waking up, trying to do their very best. And so we, we have to continue to extend grace as we work through our own kind of misconceptions and, and any, any trauma that we still may be taking with us into the workplace or into even social settings. Yeah. How do you see this going forward? You know, some of the, you know, some of the politicians, some of the, you know, people and leaders in, in our country, they've almost said we're, we're done with DEI. We're at, I believe we're just beginning, you know, it's just level of humanship that we're talking about here. Well, Sarah, you know, I don't talk politics um, because that's another, part, that's another part of my, my, my other life that, that I just, I don't mix church and state. But what I will tell you is, is, is that, you know, it's a play on words, right? Um, it's a play on words. And I think we can't get caught up or, or, um, or wrapped up in, in that wordplay. I think if we know that we want to continue to treat people with fairness, right, respect others, make sure people, um, you know, are included in all things. And we are essentially highlighting, you know, the importance of diverse perspectives, the importance of equity, which is fairness. And then inclusion is, is just making sure, you know, people are, are included in everything. We're still doing the work. And I think we get so caught up on what we call it and you know, the measurements and us not meeting the mark. You know, if you wake up with pure hearts every day, wanting to do right by people, we are going to forever meet this moment. And we're going to always crush the metrics if we do what's right. And so I would say to those individuals that um, if we really want to shift this nation, this culture, we have to continue to think about people first. Like I've mentioned that with intention around I was a mentee, throughout the whole process when I when I actually let my guard, my guard down and recognize the learnings and the beauty that I was getting in return. It, you know, what you taught me, what you shared with me, our trusted relationship that we built to this amazing friendship and a lot, you know, it's beyond allyship, you know, but it started with this level of we built trust. We were there for each other. We really listened. And, you know, the, you know, the grace that you gave me for not being perfect in the conversations, like I want to just say that again, because I feel like that's what we need for us to have these real conversations and to give ourselves that space to lean in, to get uncomfortable, to to not worry about being just right yet, making sure we're our hearts on the table for the right reasons. Yeah, I mean, for for both of us, I think when we both entered into this relationship, we did our best to seek to understand. And I think that's what got us to this far, right? We didn't start from a place of judgment. And I mean, we didn't go in, we didn't go in with ground rules. I want to make sure I'm clear. Like we didn't have like a check the box. Like these are our ground rules for talking. Like, again, we showed up to the conversation as we would show up to any conversation. We set our differences aside and we really had genuine conversations. And I think we do that with all people. We do that in our families. We do that in our friendship circles. Like the nerve of us to, to feel like we have to come to work and it gets awkward because there's an initiative that's telling us we have like that's silly. Like, and this is what I mean by like, you know, making sure that the individuals we elect understand that we're still going to do this work, regardless of what we call it, because it's just the work we do in our real lives, right? We have, we have hard conversations and they're necessary conversations. They're necessary conversations for people to feel better, right? For people not to be so, you know, feeling like they're stressed at work. Like, imagine if we didn't have those conversations and I would come in each and every day and feel like I wasn't included into my work team, not because I was a different color or I was a woman, but because like, I really just was not included. Like that's just at the end of the day, what I felt all of the other stuff aside, that's what society tells us how we, those are the things, oh, oh it's probably because of this, or it's probably because of that. No, I'm going to tell you, I think it's because of distance bias. But that's a whole concept that people wasn't ready to under even stand. But like, that's the level that I think about. I mean, we had other people of color on the team and I don't think that they were going through the same thing that I was experiencing, right? Um, we were also at different skill sets, right? These people are, were on their second and third term of this work. This was my first term of the work. 
So there was so many different factors that came into that. It just so happened to be that I am black. I am a woman and I am a millennial and you're a, a, a middle-aged white man. And so society will tell us it's more than what it was. Yeah. Like you mentioned, we're, we were working from different paths, you know, in different places, working on different things, you know, because of what we were awakening to or what we were trying to strive for. And we kept learning along the way. And I think that's so important because I know we've talked about this, this acronym that you created C, right? Which is as you start these type of conversations and relationship, this S word is sympathy. You're moving from sympathy to E, which is empathy, which is moved to A, which is moving to action. And I feel like that's what we did. I think we stepped in, we learned and inquired and we were curious with an open mind and we cared. And then we helped each other along the way. And we took actions together and allowed all, each of us in our own paths to really, to really thrive. You've really helped me to embrace listening in a different way, truly being curious to the level where I started to have a greater purpose. And you helped me see that the purpose needs to be kind of where you're from, not what you look like. I mean, when I say from like the light within you, like what is it about you that is your light? Regardless of, again, where you're from, what you look like, gender. Correct. And what's so important about doing the work, right? Now that we have done the work, individually and together, we're now able to say, oh, at that moment, we understood the importance of equity. That was an equitable practice. At the moment when we were going through that, oh, this was us getting closer to our inclusion journey. Oh, now we know how to celebrate the differences and how it makes us even that much better. So like when we were, in, when we were going through it, it wasn't that we needed to check those boxes, but we can reflect back and say, hey, if you really want to meet this DEI conversation, if you really want to understand what it means to make sure your employees belong, like this is what the word, this is what is required of that work. Like we're the living examples. And again, I hate to keep bringing it back, but it's because we were in an environment that was very welcoming to have those level of conversations of what's getting in your way. Like what's going on? Like, oh, I'm going to be out in Arizona in two weeks. I'm going to schedule some time. Like I'm coming. And I'm like, here he goes. This man is not coming up here. And then I get a call from security. Like, oh, like tears at the front door. I'm like, oh my gosh. So even that, like, I'm like, wow, like he really came. I didn't say, oh, he really came because he's a white male leader. I'm like, wow, this man really kept his word. Like, that's like, I'm like, wow. And then from that, it like really changed my perspective on many, you know how many calls I got after we had that leadership meeting when someone said, oh, I, I want to be the next Darren. And maybe they were joking or playing, but they're just like, I want to experience what Darren and you had. And I'm just like, wow. Yeah, it's because they were experiencing those similar things, trying to build team, trying to understand what that what that meant. Um, they didn't say, hey, you know, you're seen as a black leader at this company now. Like, you know, like I want to talk to you. It was like, no, I want the Darren Shamaya effect. Like, let's do this. And I'm like, OK, you got to talk to Darren about that. <laughs> I love it. And, I, and I, I appreciate you saying the word inclusion again, because it's one of those words people don't listen to what that could be and you know back in you know back to the word act or action it, to me inclusions we're listening we're taking in different perspectives we're taking in different learnings we're we're including so many amazing things to what we already know which maybe we refine and we're willing to change our ways or our perspectives ourselves yet we're not like replacing totally what we know and do yet we're we're advancing it we're augmenting our intelligence right this is the whole authentic inclusion authentic allyship we're moving away from you know artificial intelligence to really augmented intelligence. That's what we're doing. We need to figure out how do we be inclusive? How do we be generative? How do we how do we continue to evolve? And that's what we did in a relationship. And it's not about that you're a female, I'm a male, black or white or anything like that. To your point, it's how how we can get generative as humans. Before we wrap up, Shamai, I'd love to hear just any final words or thoughts for folks that are really looking to build this type of relationship to help each other thrive in the workplace or really wherever in the community? Yeah, so I would say be intentional. 
I would say, give yourself grace. You have to give yourself grace before you give others grace and you have to do the work, right? Um, whatever the work looks like to you. I can't prescribe you a prescription for this. I, I am not a doctor in DEI and I, I will never do that. Um, but what I will say is, is, is that if you do the work, if you are intentional about your relationships and creating spaces for everyone, the rest will truly be history. You'll feel better and the team around you will, will see it and feel it as well. Yeah, so energizing, Shamaya. It's amazing. You're so incredible. Your light always shines. I'm so honored. I'm just so admired by what you do and you know how much I care for you. So, you know, thanks for changing my life. I got to tell you, you're letting me and allowing me to light up other folks around me every day. So you're a big part of that. If you're ever just sitting back saying, just know that every day you're part of me, you're part of me of what I'm doing every day. So thank you, Darren. Continue to be great. There needs to be more Darren's out there. And I know they are. We just need to have them pop up to the surface. So thank you so much for everything. I appreciate you. That's all for today's episode. If you liked the show, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Live Your Possible dares to unlock your fullest potential and become an avenue for others to do the same. Join the community by visiting IgniteHappy.com. It's time to discover endless possibilities with equal opportunity for all. See you again next week for more insights on how you can live your possible.